How can perfectionism get in the way of your self-care? Oh, this is one of those other subjects where I feel like I could maybe qualify as an expert. <laughs> I feel like I have so many examples of feeling like I can't do enough, so I'll just do nothing instead. And that kind of syndrome can keep you stuck where you are indefinitely. So it's definitely something to think about if you, if you do resonate with, you know, suffering from the tragedy of perfection, um, then maybe something to think about in relation to your, to your self-care journey. And ultimately, I think healing my perfectionism is part of why I have the approach to my self-care that I do. And for that matter, why I feel like I was able to be so successful with it. And this is where, if you've listened to the rest of the series, I talk many times about setting a low bar for yourself. So not only are we not trying to be perfect, we're not even trying to be good. We're not even trying to be mediocre. We're showing up. If you showed up today for yourself, for at least five minutes, then that counts. And you did it, yay, you're done. And if literally all you can do is that five minutes, then you did great. And if some days you sit there and you milk it and milk it and milk it and five minutes turns into 20, turns into an hour, turns into two hours, go with it as much as you can, as much as you have time to slash it feels good, like if it doesn't feel good, then don't keep doing it, right? Like the self-care, the whole point is that we're helping ourselves feel a teensy bit better than we already did. And we can do that with five minutes. Five minutes of attention cast upon ourselves. Um, for examples of like what kinds of activities, again, I have a very low bar as far as what counts as self-care and I go through these in detail in the what activities are in my self-care video. I'll link that in the description for you guys in case you are looking for ideas. Um, remember everybody's process is going to look completely different and again that's where I'll also point you back to the why I do self-care video which the gist of that story is that I'm an emotionally in unstable person by nature. My energy is extremely volatile. It's all over the place. I tend to be kind of all or nothing. And my moods, they've swung from one extreme to the other extreme of being so deep in depression, I'm lethargic and can't move, to I'm manic and I haven't slept for four days. I've lived it all. And in the midst of all of it, most of what was throwing me so far off my balance wasn't life so much as it was my expectations for how I had to handle my life. So in college, that looked like forcing myself to get good grades. And when that was too hard, I just tried harder until I had an episode that was probably the worst, the closest I ever came to not being here anymore. And it had to be a thing where you gotta let go of your grades. Like if you get B's, if you get C's, if you, I mean like you gotta still be here to even get grades. So you're gonna have to let go of whatever this is. And that was part of kind of the first layer of perfectionism coming off was through that breaking point. Um, but even now, like as I relate to myself, I don't force myself to show up in my morning time. I don't force myself to take care of myself. I give myself that attention because it feels good when I do it. When I sit down and I have a cup of coffee in the quiet and write a gratitude list, 10 things that I love about my life, like that is quality time spent with myself in my life. I'm happy in those minutes and that's worth everything. So 
it's not something that we really have to push ourselves into. And I also would tell myself like this was back when exercise was a really common part of my self-care. Not that I don't anymore. I just kind of have a different relationship with it, but I was running at that time. And, you know, on the days that I didn't do my long runs, then it was a two mile run that I was shooting for, which that would be like running from my apartment over to this walking trail and back. And there would be so many days where I would tell myself like, oh, I'm just not up for it today. And I would just skip it. I would just like not, not go at all. And it's like, how about how about a one mile run? How about a five minute walk around the block? How about like, how about lower the bar? You don't have to do the, the perfect version of like the idea that we have in our head of like who we would like to show up in the world as that can really get in the way of like actually taking care of yourself, which really only happens within a moment. So you don't have to spend an hour, you could literally spend 10 seconds looking at yourself in the eyes and the mirror and breathing with yourself and calming and anchoring back into yourself. Those 10 seconds can be really high quality self-care. So as maybe counterintuitive, especially in today's culture, as it may sound that I'm saying lower the bar, <laughs> please please, please, please lower it so that no matter how tired or frazzled or scattered you are in your day, you can absolutely step over this bar because it's so freaking low. You can do it no matter what, you know? And that's where some of those activities on the list, it's like play a couple songs and dance it out. You know, spend five minutes making yourself a healthy-ish meal, healthier than what you're normally accustomed to. You know, like any little tiny effort that you put towards caring about yourself, it absolutely counts and it crosses over that threshold of, yay, you took care of yourself today. That's amazing. That's incredible. Think about all the days in your life you didn't do that. And today you did. Today you spent the five minutes. Good for you anything else that happens on top of those five minutes, consider it a bonus.